Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Good Bit Podcast. Thanks for joining us for another week. My name is Chris, and as always, I'm joined by Aaron. We hope you are well. I'm going to pose that question to my co-host today. Aaron, how are you? Are you well? I am well. Are you well? I'm well, yes. A little bit tired today, not going to lie. I'm tired today. I think it's the moon. It's the what? The moon. Okay, explain. Uh, no explanation. Uh, when everyone is feeling a certain way, uh, people often say it's the moon. So I'm going to say that. <sighs> okay, I'll blame the moon too. That's fine. Um, we have an exciting film to talk about today. Something a little bit different this week. Um, that This is like a sort of arty, independent-ish mm-hmm. film um, that neither of us had really seen. I hadn't really heard of. I don't know if you'd heard of it, really. Um, I know you kind of chose it, but um, it's going to be fun to talk about. And these are the sort of films I want to be talking about on The Good Bit, especially because these are ones I want to watch. However, here's the thing, right? And hear me out here. Um, Obviously, we're a podcast. We want to share the show. We want to get listeners and stuff like that. Sometimes we're probably going to need to steer towards like more mainstream films and bigger films because more people have seen them. Well, how mainstream, my question is, how mainstream do you want? Because... Midnight in Paris, even though I hadn't seen it. Uh, I mean, by Woody Allen, I mean, it, that's pretty, it's a pretty big yeah, film. You're right, but what I mean is it's a kind of like a wee bit of a hidden gem, really, I thought. Um, it's quite it's quite a famous film, I think. Is it? I literally never heard of it until last week when you said that. But you're, you're not a Woody Allen guy, though, are you? I'm, well, I'm not, a, I'm not, not a Woody Allen guy. Maybe I shouldn't be. <laughs> but what, uh, what, what have you seen? Don't know. Yeah, I don't think you've seen... I don't think you're a Woody Wait, Allen. Let me do, well, do a search. Hang on a second. Woody Allen. I bet I have, but just filmography. It's, it's, it's Midnight in Paris we're doing, guys, by the way. Midnight in Paris is the film. Okay, so yeah, yeah. his main film is Annie Hall, which I've not seen. Oh. Um, we also have Manhattan, which I've not seen. Right, okay, you've not, yeah. Uh, there's other films such as... Uh, Cafe Society, which I actually was going to see in the cinema when it came out in 2016, but I did not see that. Um, Love and Death. Why would I want to watch that? Um, interra- interra- in- Irrational Man. I was going to say Interrational Man. <laughs> it's just made up a word. Yep, okay, you're right. I am not a Woody Allen guy. Not because I don't like his films. I probably, you know, you hear all these bad things about him. Maybe it's because, you know, the the... Um, what's the word? The accusations and stuff that came out kind of maybe put me off yeah. seeing any of his films, and also might have put off television stations and from hearing websites about and stuff <laughs> promoting his stuff and talking about. Him. Maybe that's the reason. Are you an a Woody Allen admirer? Um, admirer of the man? Maybe not. Uh, yeah, there certainly are some very heinous accusations against him. Um, it's definitely one of these things of separating the the uh art the from art. the artist yeah um which i think it is obviously a, a personal choice you know if you if you can't sit and watch a woody allen film without thinking about the things that have been um said about him and accused and you know sent back and forth and, and you you can't get that ahead when you watch that then that that is absolutely fine that is understandable totally. i personally can uh, yes i can probably i mean if we watch films that were produced by harvey weinstein you know every some of our favorite month, films yeah. you know uh if you can't that's absolutely fine i understand it but i can and i imagine you can too yeah i think it's because it you mind especially because he's the filmmaker um when so it's his vision beforehand you're like right okay god it's him it's a Woody Allen film I need to support him but then when you watch it and you see the great acting and the great actors and the great performances and the great script and the great music I think a little bit of that kind of goes to the back of my mind and I don't I don't dwell on it too much well if you take a stance of I'm not going to watch Woody Allen films because of what he's done you Fair enough, but you also, you know, it wasn't just him that made the films. There's a lot of good people who were involved in all of his films, and especially, yeah, the performances, the actors, a lot of hard work went into them that wasn't necessarily his work. 
So, yes, there's a, there's a common one that comes up in the in the wrestling world. As you know, I'm a big fan and I have a whole lot of podcasts dedicated towards it, where there was this great wrestler in the mid-2000s who um, went a little bit mad and um, killed his family and what? himself. Yes, um, it was a double murder-suicide. Oh my god! Um, in his house in Atlanta, two thousand seven, July two thousand seven, June maybe, um, and it was one of the more famous stories in wrestling. How like it almost destroyed the whole industry and stuff because everybody was talking about it and everybody had the, their eyes on the business and stuff like that. And um, it was through like head trauma and that sort of thing and rage. Oh my! His name god. was Chris Benoit, and um, he he left a really bad legacy on on the business and made a lot of people sour on it. So now a lot of people, I know many people who can't watch any of his matches or any of his storylines and that sort of thing because of that reason, whereas I can because I grew up through that time and I can kind of, you know, I appreciate all the other things that go into it rather than just him. And you right. know, I was a fan of his before all this happened, you know. It's not going to taint all of his work afterwards, you know. It's like um, Kevin Spacey as well, watching Kevin Spacey films. You know, that's also one that's really edgy and stuff. You can watch American Beauty about Kevin Spacey having a crush on a teenage girl. That doesn't sit well very much anymore, you know. But then, mm. like, you can probably watch House of Cards. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I don't think I've watched as... Not out of choice, but I don't think I've watched the Kevin Spacey's film since since all that happened. Really? I don't yeah. remember sitting down. That's what I mean about how it happens and it's glamorized and then you never feed her from the films because of the reason. Yeah, the films are sort of put to the... I mean, put to the side. But, but, but still, it's... it's it's yeah. Midnight in Paris is on Netflix, so clearly yes, that's true. They're not completely well. It's allegations, it's, it's, isn't it? It's it's tricky. It's, like, yeah, with Harvey Weinstein, it's it's more clear cut. You know, well, he was. I I don't actually. I'm not read up on the whole video. Yeah, me neither. Story, I almost don't want to. I mean, I I should know, but I almost don't want to because it's such a dark kind of thing, isn't it? And I, you know, I think Annie Hall was on Netflix and stuff. So, you know, I think they're looking at these films as classics rather than who made it. Well, listen, let's get straight into it. What did you... Well, no. I want to hear about you right now. If anyone else <laughs> doesn't, you can skip about 10 minutes and you can, we can get to the film. But um, I want to hear about you right now. You're tell, right. me, tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, ask me any questions you want. <laughs> ask you any questions. Um, Q&A, give me a Q&A. Your favourite colour? Blue. Royal blue. Why? Uh uh, I don't know. I guess it's a it's a football thing. My football team have have that colour, and I've just always been surrounded by that colour because of that. Gosh, we are just touching on all the controversial topics today in this in this episode <laughs> of the good bit. I'll steer clear of that one. Um, what have you been doing? Does. What have you been doing today? Good question. Had a busy day. Um, we Go were. On. It was so funny. We were supposed to record around four, um, and for some reason, I thought like we could do it earlier. So I started to think we could do it earlier. Then it realistically it ended up just. It was probably more likely going to be around four anyway. Um, we, so yeah, yeah, I, I've not been working too much because as we are actors and that sort of thing, and I have this job with a university that allows me to work from home, but it also involves working with schools. Kind of talk, talked about it before, but um, because of that aspect, a lot of schools aren't at, you know, kids aren't at school right now because of the restrictions and that sort of thing. So I've lost a lot of work that way too. So I've been trying to do all the work and my boss has been very good, giving me as many different types of work as possible, like making videos and editing and contributing to the work and all that stuff. So that's been nice. But also every so often, I know a new opportunity will come up to make some money that is unlike anything I usually do. And my cousin is a builder and uh, he took an independent sort of job where someone that he knew wanted like a outhouse hut kind of thing in their back garden as a sort of like portable gym yoga station, wow. right? Um, which you kind of had in your old house. It was a bit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, you used it for painting, didn't you? Um, Sometimes. Which was nice. We podcasted there before. We did an episode of The Good Bit there. Um, so yeah, he phoned me the other day, my cousin, and he was like, I need a hand just with this job. It's not going to be too much work for you, but I can pay you a certain amount of money for it if you want to come in and help me. And I was like, sure. Looking to, you know, as a as a, an actor struggling, you just try and find as many paydays as you can, can't you? So I was like, yeah, sure, of course, I'll come help. I would have done it for free, of course, as a family member asking for help. But, you know, right. the money's a good thing. Um, so yeah, I went there and it was essentially just that. We had to put the roof onto this outhouse we had to put insulation in the walls and the roof itself. Um, it was a it was a hard day's work. It was labour. Was it, was it raining? 
It was pouring, yes. Oh, gosh. Um, we were supposed to be, like, on top of the roof and putting a new roof on. Um, but we have postponed that for during the week because it was too wet. There was no point in taking all the roof off and then it'd be soaking on the inside as well. Yeah. So um, we're going to postpone that to during the week, which is fine. It just means I need to go back and do it. Um, so we were mo- mostly inside, but there was a lot of like going back and forth to the tools and the materials and that sort of thing and bringing it inside the, the outhouse. But it was mainly just cold more than anything. Mm. Like you can deal with the rain, can you? It goes off and on, but it was mainly just cold. It's, you know, the start of February in Scotland, it's never... And we're in Cumberland Old, so it's not the nicest bit for um for snow and ice and that sort of thing. And it was also in this kind of like on top of a hill, so it was quite open. So we're getting a little breeze. So it was cold. But listen, sometimes these days are good because they make you feel they make you feel productive, don't they? They make you feel oh, no, like you're I doing, like that. You're I'm, doing good. I'm, I'm into um I'm into that. I I I actually <clears throat> sorry sorry because I'm quite choked off actually. Uh, no um. <laughs> I uh, I played tennis with this guy at my tennis club in London, and uh, he then after the match or something, he said like he said what I said asked what he does, and he says, "Oh, I'm a I own a loft business. I build lofts for people mm. uh, all across London." He told me all about it, and I was like, very interested. And then I was thinking I should just pop in a wee email because. I feel like that, that that's something I'm I'm into, just being a labourer. Yeah, I maybe did it maybe for a I'm summer. not. Maybe I'm completely mistaken and I will Well wait. see that's the but thing. I when when maybe... I was when I was told about the job, I was like, Yeah, I'll do it. But then you Sounds get there, manual. Sounds you know you get there and it's cold and it's dirty and you know what I mean, like and you're you're sweaty at the same first time. thing in the morning and yeah and stuff. So it was fine. Listen, I had a good day. Um and I'm not particularly strong, right? Maybe I am, I don't know. But in terms of arms and stuff. So like I'm holding up the insulation and the and the boards to go on the roof and you know my cousin's like drilling he's doing all the hard stuff you know he's the trained one you know I'm just sitting there holding stuff and making sure everything's in the right place and stuff and after a while like my arms are getting sore and my back's getting sore and I was like I can't complain here because he does this all the time he's doing the hard work and I'm just holding stuff because I'm so unused to <laughs> and skinny. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is so sore. So every so often when he'd go and talk to the owner of the house and stuff, I'd just be like <laughs> <laughs> but, but the owner of the house gave us lots of coffee and cakes and stuff, so it was nice. Was it a nice house? Yes, actually, a nice area. Um my cousin has like an auntie that they've kind of lost contact with before, but she lives in she used to live in one of these massive houses out there in Cumberland. And he actually drove me to the house that he used to go to when he was younger and I was I was very impressed. I've decided this. When I'm older, right? You know, you used to say that when you're in school. When I'm older, when I grow up, I want to do this. When I'm older from what I am now, when I'm bigger, I want to live in a big house. Oh, okay. Decided that. It's more important to me than food. <laughs> <laughs> what? More important to me than having a car. What do you mean by that? Did you decide that today? I've been thinking about it for a while because I've been going walks and stuff. I'm noticing houses more. Whereas before, where you have the mindset of, I don't need a big house. Not necessarily not need a big house. I just never thought about it before. Yeah. I, I live with my parents, like, this <laughs> when is my house. Leave? Let's, let's when... get deep. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to leave? When I can afford to, I guess. I think that should answer. be, you know, screw Midnight in Paris. That should be the title <laughs> of this um, week's podcast. When is Chris going to leave home? And it will get a lot more clicks, especially from yeah, well, be like, oh, right. wonder when. People will be curious, and my my family will probably listen as well. Yeah, we're like, oh, I want to know when. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just so cozy here, and I'm. I just, know you've got such an ultimate setup. <laughs> you you bloody well do. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, and and I I I don't know. I'm around people who are always wanting to help me, <laughs> and I have this spitless other room. You know, in my actual bedroom, all I do is sleep in it. I don't use it ever. I'm always in here. Oh, so it's like an room. office I have. It's I like to call it an office. Does anyone no, sorry? Does anyone else ever use the your room? Yeah, your not room. as often as me though. I'm I'm in here every day, you know. <clears throat> I know it'd be hard for them to come in and just watch a movie. <laughs> I would I listen, I welcome people coming and visiting me. You know what Is I mean? I'm always you? alone. People can come see me. <laughs> I don't mind. Sometimes I'll watch stuff with like my sister or whatever, and then like other people use this room. But this is this is where I do my work in here at the desk, and you know, and where when I'm not where working would... I'll 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 watch stuff. If I'm not watching stuff, I'm reading on the couch. That's just where I chill. I know, I know. It's brilliant. I I personally love that room. 
I love visiting your room. Uh, you've been here a while. You've slept here before. I've slept here many times. There, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a comfy couch. Um, yes. So, how? I mean, we can chat about this during the week. What have you been up to this week? Did we chat about this during the week? Well, we text about it. I do. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> uh, no, Hermes <laughs> have let me down. Hermes have gone a wall. In fact, I'm fuck. I'm I'm angry about this. Go on then, give us your rant. Well, this I've uh, nothing to say. Uh, Leanne, manager Leanne, if you're listening, which I know you do. Um, <laughs> where's my shift? This isn't um, Leanne from previous good bits, of course, that does listen. No, I wish that Leanne was my manager. <laughs> yes. Uh, unfortunately, that not Leanne is my one. manager, Who, who's perfectly nice, but the the whole Harmy system seems to just be. You get this person's phone number and you text them and then they text you when they want you to have a shift. And she's been texting me on the day, like the day before. There's been no schedule nor no prior, you know, planning whatsoever for the three weeks that I've been doing it, whatever. But she texts me at like seven in the morning saying, can you come in at nine and work today? And of course, I woke up at nine or half eight or whatever i was like well oh, sorry I, t- too short notice i can't yeah um, and i said i'm, I'm sorry i was sleeping I, i was sleeping <laughs> don't kill me um and then i said i'm free tomorrow i'm free every other day just give me some notice let me know when and i'll work not a peep not a reply oh god and i'm not gonna keep bothering her because you know come on like i've done this yes. before like I said any shifts and no replies like, and i text again it's like, i'm not just gonna keep harassing you don't yeah. you need to reply because I've, I've laid it out on the table i said i'm free forget about it it's boring forget about it. it's boring for all you listeners but no no i like i like listening to your misery um yeah, so... I, you know aaron's misery corner corner that's it's that's becoming a thing. thing i do i do miss you in misery corner sometimes because we got some interesting emails before i think that was my favorite segment <laughs> <laughs> Got so many interesting emails. We did, we did. That was so many years ago, man. man. Where does the time go? So no, it flies away from you. Yeah, uh, especially you when you're not having... getting any shifts. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Did you enjoy having Ian on last week? I did a lot. It was uh, an interesting dynamic that formed. I think it was. Uh, yeah, I really liked it. Um, good. So Ian is still in the process of choosing next week's film, and um, we'd like to maybe get him on board for next week. Again, if if so, if he picks a really one that he's passionate about. Right. So Aaron took the initiative to, it was his turn anyway, so he just picked one on Netflix and we decided we'll do one this week just in case. And then if Ian wants to join us again next week, then great. So that's why we're doing Midnight in Paris, not this big blockbuster. But let's be honest, if it's Ian Grieve that's choosing the film, it might have been something like um, a 1920s French film or something. So maybe we got off the hook there. fa la 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 from... um... (laughs) 1805. You, you know what? It's, it's, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> You've not seen Falalala from 1805 <laughs> before films were even made. It's still, you can watch it. You, you, you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? It's audio only, but it's a fuck, it's a film. <laughs> yeah, so I really enjoyed having him on last week. It's nice to have, as you say, that different dynamic. And it's just nice to hear from him again. We used to see him every day, and now we don't, so. We did. It took me straight back to college days. Uh, Didn't it feel uh, like we were in a lecture? Like someone he goes off in his he goes off in his rants and stuff. It's brilliant. I haven't seen him since. So no, it was really nice. <laughs> really nice to chat to him. I haven't seen him in ex- pretty much exactly a year, and like next week because I saw him the day of the Oscars twenty twenty. That was the last day I saw him in person. That was the weirdest time for me to look back on. Is like the first few months of twenty twenty. It's weird that it even existed, really. What could have been? Because we write off 2020, it's like 2020. But then you think about January and February and a little bit of March. A little bit of March. was just sort of normal. Yeah, but you know what the, the best part of 2020 was? It's the end? No, well, I guess for some people. But mine was August. Because it was like everything started to open up again. And people got so optimistic and oh look we can go back to the cinema and oh my god we can go back to restaurants and have nights out and go see our friends and then we were right back again in lockdown phase one so it was like we were had that little bit of hope that we all needed and then we were shut down again so when that happens again hopefully we don't need to go back to it because rates are going down and vaccines are being passed out and who knows but the good bit is a covid free podcast so let's let's move on right uh 
I also haven't picked the film for next week. That's fine. Do it on the we'll fly. Wait, we'll, we'll wait for Ian and then we'll just do it on the fly. Yeah. Yep. Easy, easy it is. Okay. Let's chat about Midnight in Paris then. Why did you choose Midnight in Paris? Because I watched a video on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. And it was a very optimistic, nice wee video about some, uh, this guy on YouTube who does videos about, I guess they're sort of many documentaries about stuff. And he had a theory that the uh, the 2020s post-COVID will be um, just like the 1920s in terms of the, you know, the roaring 20s and the big boom and the sort of sexual awakening and the right. freedom and the parties and the madness that um you know is sort of a way that the 1920s are viewed probably through rose tinted glasses but still that sort of idea that era he thinks will happen again in the 2020s because it's going to be post covid era and everyone's been kept inside and everyone's taken for granted what we had before right and eventually we're going to be let out again and it's going to be mental and brilliant he <laughs> suggested which I love that idea. It's kind of, you know, it's really optimistic the way of thinking about it, but it kind of makes sense in a way. You know, there's going to be realistic because people are going to be more free. I think, especially when everybody's vaccinated. There's Everyone. not even like yeah. there's not even like a hint of scaredness anymore. Well, that's what's going to need to happen. But <clears throat> when that does happen, um, <clears throat> oh, my throat. I'm just <clears throat> I never I'm never like this. Do you have the cove? No. I Do you have that it, cove? As just what I went down the wrong way. Um, yes. What was I saying? The Roaring Twenties yes. are returning. Roaring Twenties are returning. And it made sense to me. Uh, everyone's had their liberties sort of taken away. And uh, we take it for granted. And we realize that now. And boom, it's going to be mental. So I thought the first film that came into my consciousness that was set in the Twenties was Midnight in Paris. Because I heard about it before. Uh, just had i knew it was something to do with the 20s and it was woody allen and i love paris it's right one of my favorite destinations one of the favorite places i've ever been in, in the world um i've been twice three times in fact uh just recently last september um and you i said want... they were mad no even co like consideration for other people no it was like the ones. roaring 20s already right. in paris um <laughs> <laughs> And then as soon as we left, their COVID numbers went... Boof. Yeah, yeah um, you saw it coming. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to watch this film and maybe you'd get a glimpse of the the idea of the Roaring Twenties and it would uh, make you excited for what's to come, potentially. That's why I chose the film. It's a long explanation. Sounds good. Um, and I thank you for choosing it. The only time I've ever been to Paris in my life was 2003. Okay. Throwback. Throw back now. Ever since this day, I've wanted to go back because it was a lovely place and stuff. And especially now, I appreciate things better and stuff as I'm older and as everybody does. You know, I'd love to go back. Seems very romantic. Seems very picturesque. Just seems like a lovely, chilled place. You know, maybe not right now, but you know, and I chilled, doesn't. chilled, not so much. Oh, really? Everybody's going mental. Yeah, that's kind of part of why I love it. It's just I could I could go on about. But I love Paris. Like I didn't, my my girlfriend Anna uh, has had lived there for a year and That's a bit. Right? If you don't get like a beautiful place to live over there, no, we don't. No, Airbnb. But, um, okay. <laughs> but she used to live there, au pairing, like being a au pair uh, for like a year and a half. So she knows the city well. Uh, right. She speaks fluent French, um, and so you just with going there with her, you get that real. She knows the places to go. You, you, we can. As a couple, so she can speak the language. So we, it's just it makes it a lot easier, absolutely and better. Um, and she just completely opened me up to French culture. Like I'd been to France loads of times on like summer holidays, but I'd never really appreciated or understood French culture. And it's just, it's brilliant. Pra Paris is brilliant, and it's so much better than London. And right. there's always this debate: London or Paris? And of course, Parisians they love London. Londoners love Paris, but. Paris is unequivocally better than London. Okay. I'm telling you now. Um, yeah. So when I when I was there in 2003, 
um, we were waiting to go to Euro Disney. That's where we were. We went there for Euro, and it was in October, so it was like Halloween themed. And Euro Disney was Halloween, so it was beautiful. Um, so we were waiting for my mum to get ready to go to Euro Disney, and me and my dad were ready, and we were, I was sitting on the bed, and we had TV on, and on the TV was the World Strongest Man competition, right? <laughs> so you know, you're in Paris. I'm gonna watch got, it. Got to watch it. So we're watching you're the World's Strongest Man. Got to <laughs> I don't even know if they're all French. This is the world's strongest man, so it could be for everybody. But I was cheering the French ones. Anyway, um, so we were, I was standing there, I was I was watching this, and I was thinking, these guys are brilliant. These guys are amazing. You know, and I was a wrestling fan by this point, so I liked, you know, I liked the spectacle of big guys and looking really impressive and stuff. And these guys were lifting the weights, and they were having these amazing sessions of lifting up and, and breaking records and that sort of thing. And I was like, these guys are so cool. I'm going to try and be a world's strongest man. So I stood on top of my bed, lifted my pillow, and pretended the pillow was a weight, and was like, oh, I'm struggling with the pillow, and I was trying to lift it because I'm the world's strongest man. And I lifted it above my head, and I was like, Dad, look, I've done it. But it's so heavy, and I, I pretended it was really heavy, and I fell back, and boom, cracked my head off the bed frame. Oh! <gasps> So, I, do, I mean, we're on FaceTime right now. I'll show you in, in person. I have a scar right along there. From Paris. From Paris 2003. It was, my head was like this. It was like open. It was bad. He's in the episode of Family Guy when Stewie gets, fell, falls down the stairs and his head sliced on. It was like that. So my dad, so I just was like laughed and I was like, <laughs> that was funny. And I kind of felt the blood and the blood started pouring down my neck and stuff on my shoulder. And, my, and I was just, no, I was just in shock and I started screaming crying <sighs> so my dad's like we need to phone an ambulance meet for an ambulance and i was like no i'm not I, I i refuse i'm whatever seven years old at this point i refuse to go to an ambulance i'm not going to the hospital i'm fine clearly it wasn't fine it was blood pouring in my head and my dad's like we need to go to the hospital we need to go to the hospital i was like no i'm not going he's like right oh god oh, i'll try to cheer you up um how would you feel about going on a tour around paris in a fire engine and i was like i that sounds that sounds amazing. Yeah, like yeah, I'd love to do that. Fire engine comes, get in the back of the fire engine. I'm holding my head together with my hand. I've still not realised how severe this cut is. Fire engine takes me straight to the hospital. <laughs> I don't. <I'm... laughs> he braved me. And the, the did fire, you get a engine, fire engine. It's just what happened. You either phone you, the the rules there at the time. You oh, phone an ambulance or a fire engine. The fire engine. If still phoned the emergency services. It just so happened that there was a fire engine that came and got me. Oh, so and, um, you're right, I see. The fire engine came, tricked me. He's like, we just need to go. We just need to get it sewed up. It'll be fine. It won't be sore. Oh. Was it sore? Famous last word. Yeah, I got in there. Literally, it's sitting in the waiting area like this, holding my head together. And uh, sat down. The guys didn't even drug me, knock me out. They didn't do anything. Just whoosh, needle in my head. Sewed it like a, like a, like a, like knitting my head all the way up here. I was just, I just, I don't have many memories because it was my, it was a head injury, but yeah. like I remember, like lying on that bed, screaming oh, at this absolutely. French doctor, you know, and like flinging my arms about and like, oh my god, it was torture. And they only put like eight stitches in, and it was fine, felt better. Went back to the hotel and stuff. My mum was pure nervous and stuff. So then, obviously, you fly back home and stuff. I went to school. I was showing all my friends this cool cut I've got in my head, and then we had to go to the. The, to the doctors here home to get the stitches removed like two weeks later or whatever and the guy was like that's like a severe cut they should have glued that it wasn't safe to put in stitches and it was so unnecessary mm. it would have been pain free and would have been done in five minutes if we just glued it shut and it would have been you wouldn't even need to come back to the doctors it would have just been done there and then so the french doctors didn't need to, st to stitch me up and it was one of the most traumatic experiences of my life Wow. Yeah. And yet you still want to go back. That's good. I didn't want to go back for a while, but now I do. Yeah. Now you've realized. That was 2003. That, that was a long time. Like, you can you can crack your head open anywhere. I just know that, you know, when although, I go to Although Paris, I get that the, the French doctors fucked you up a bit. So I understand. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. What if something happens to me this time and I need to go back to the French doctors? I'm <laughs> sure that was just that bad judgment on that doctor. I'm not saying all yeah. French doctors are bad. But no. also, if I go back to, Fran to France now and the world's strongest man's on TV... I need to watch it. And don't try and be one of them. Don't try this at home. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my French story. I really, really want to go back to Rectify last time. That's, I, wow. 
I feel so like when I was watching Midnight in Paris, I was like, I'm going to go there soon. Were you, so, what did you think? <laughs> Half an hour in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the film. Right, Thought brilliant. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about uh, lots of different things, and this is a good bit <laughs> podcast. Uh, we'll have Ian Grieve. See you later. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to tell that story because I was thinking about it watching the film. Um, and we should we should share some stories on the good bit sometimes. Oh, that's important. Uh, it's better yeah. than the movie chat, let's be honest. Yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're more interested than all the movies. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed the film. It was um, it was very easy to watch. Your first uh, Woody Allen film? Seems like it. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, really enjoyed it. Happy we watched it. It was a delight to watch, as I wrote down, um, because of the beautiful setting. You know, we're, we're talking about Woody Allen not being a very nice person, these accusations and that sort of thing, but clearly... You know, he's got an, a good eye for films in terms of landscapes and settings and backgrounds and that sort of thing because every shot was almost like a Wes Anderson film mm. um, without the symmetry. It was beautiful. And I love Rachel McAdams. Yeah. Absolutely. Loki crush. I didn't... When someone says, who's your, your celebrity crush? I never see her. And but every no, film she's in, I'm like, I like her. I get that. Um, yeah, it's a very... Uh, quaint film um i was oof, this crazy thing's got in my throat today i don't know what's going on it's making all sorts of noises um i was i've heard this is a good film and people have recommended it to me and i do have appreciated woody allen's previous work in fact well that's an understatement i when i first saw annie hall in manhattan i was blown away absolutely loved it uh like I said last week, I, I have a strange uh, pull towards um, slightly older Jewish writers. Um, <laughs> okay, they just they're just brilliant. Um, <laughs> um, but I've seen I've also seen Wonder Wheel a couple of years ago, which was one of his new ones. Right, and it was so it was one of the worst films I've ever seen. <laughs> and right. and and I've seen a couple of other as more current films I can't remember now, but they're really really bad, really bad. Um, and I was surp- I was glad that this one wasn't horrific, but 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 I kind of see the trend of what happened to his style. Like I just like there's that obviously that very wittily intelligent artistic arty dialogue um um that he does um they're not talking about culture and art yeah. and and it's quick and it's really intriguing to listen to um and that film this film has that in spade lows and if you like that it's it's i don't know it's just really pleasing to listen to i don't know yeah it's and it's like i words. found a point where there's two couples who are like walking in this beautiful setting having almost two different conversations. And that was really interesting. Not just he, because of what they're saying, but just the style of it and stuff. His writing uh, like, is just sort of amusing on what it means to be an artist uh, in this film and all of his other films, really. Um, that's kind of the theme. It's, he writes from his own experience, I guess, and he's a writer and right. he, he always writes about writers. Um, but Annie Hall and Manhattan, they have everything that Midnight in Paris has. But they also have this, like, energy, this like ticking sort of heartbeat that just feels throughout the entire film. There's obviously that's not an action film. There's no, you know what I mean, um, very heady, very wordy. But they just have this energy that his later films, including Midnight in Paris, just don't have. Right. Um, so I do. I'd I'd say to you if you if you enjoyed this film. Give Annie Hall a watch. I, I nearly watched Annie Hall at one point on Netflix and I decided against it, but it's, it's been on my radar for a while. Give it a go. It is, it is, it's a brilliant film. Um, you know, I think, remember that, that podcast we did in your outhouse? Yeah. Um, at, at your old house in Perth? I think we were going to recommend each other a film. I think you recommended me Annie Hall. You didn't even watch it. What did you recommend no. me? I wonder. Uh, if I watched it, then that makes you look bad. No, I don't think you did watch it. What was that again? I can't remember, but I, I mean, it I wasn't one that was like at the top of your list by any means. Right. So it's well, okay though. Um, well, I think it was Pleasantville. 
with uh, Tobey Maguire and Reese Witherspoon. I think I recommended that one to you anyway. Well, I'm, um, I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Owen Wilson. Yeah. Never the biggest fan. I enjoy them in this film. I just don't like the way he delivers lines, and I get it. Like that's his thing. I get it. Like that's people like him and like the style and the way that he kind of talks. And wow, and like he always does this. And it's fine. It's just every actor's got a style, and it works for him great. Happy for him. It's just not someone I would go out of my way to watch because of that reason. No, I get you. Um, I I really. He's one of these. I thought, actors... I thought he was really good in this film. Yeah, he always sort of always plays a sort of weird version of himself, which yeah. is just a thing. Um, but yeah, I I I enjoyed him in this film. I think he sort of gave it a bit of a grounding because you sort of know if you watch films, you sort of know in Owen Wilson and sort of him being the leading man in this sort of weird Woody Allen film sort of gives it a familiarity that I think is helpful. You know what I, mean? I think um yeah, and I think a lot of films when you, you watch when you're younger kinda of glamorize certain actors that you kinda of grew up watching, right? But then when you're older you kinda of realise that, you know, you might not like this actor, you might not like that film or whatever, but also you realise that that film you watched and you held so closely because you watched it a lot isn't that big, right? Did you ever watch a film called Drill Bit Taylor? No. Right, exactly. I had it on DVD, it's Owen Wilson, first time I've ever seen him, and at the time, I loved it. Comedy, wacky comedy, he's like a cool dad sort of thing. Loved him, you know? I, I, may, I don't think I've watched that film in 15 years. I don't know anybody else in my life right now who's seen that film, and it's Owen Wilson. I watch him now, I'm probably like, if I watched Robert Taylor today, I probably wouldn't enjoy it. I watched um, Paul Blart Mall Cop recently right. with Kevin James, and I, I had it on DVD, and I really enjoyed that when I was like nine. And I watched it and I was like, this is nowhere near as good as I remember. I thought I would get that nostalgic feel. Obviously, it's not going to be, it's a kid's film, you know, but um, I, don't, I didn't have that nostalgic feeling with it. So I wonder if people who grew up with Owen Wilson in bigger films, you know, if they watched Midnight in Paris, are they going to love that film? Because it was really artistic and well written and stuff because it's him? Or is this the sort of film that he's actually really good in going to like change their opinion on him? I don't know. I think that's interesting. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh... I d- it didn't change my opinion of him. He does. He really. Um, I tell you what, he didn't. I did like the film. One critique being, it just doesn't have the same energy as his most successful, famous, you know, work. Okay. But he certainly didn't help with that whole thing of not having very much energy because, like you say, yeah, he's, yes, that's a good. He delivers his lines sort of wow, and I'm I'm going back in a. You know the twenties, and he always the like, whispers everything. I can, can you believe I'm going to go and believe? speak to Hemingway? He's oh, here, he's Hemingway. I, I, I didn't even know it was you. Uh, you can't like listen to that for an hour and thirty six minutes. You can't, unfortunately. Uh, and a kind of with Woody Allen, he has such a clear voice. Like you can hear him. You know, it's just his right. vision. Kind of in the same way that someone like Wes Anderson can. And for me. They're they're clearly very alluring directors. They make stuff that you could want to watch, but sometimes with both of their films, after an hour and a half, I'd start to get tired of it because it is very stylistic and very Absolutely. particular to them. And I just start after an hour and a half. I sometimes go, oh, "Come on." We we love Wes Anderson on this show. We talk about we've bonded over him before and stuff. I can't watch three Wes Anderson films in a row. It's not that I get sick of the style. I just want to see something else, you know? And I guess, you know, this film in particular, you, you kind of want to see something else after an hour and a half, but still, like, it's, I get it's what not, you mean by that. Yeah, it's not like you get sick of it, is it? It's like, you get... Yeah. I don't yeah, know, it's just, you've got a certain, you get tired of it. You've got a certain... You it's can like st- anything. Yeah. Like, you know, you yeah. watch a Netflix show, you know, pe- some people can watch a whole season in a day. That's not me. You know, three episodes, I'm done. Like, Because I suppose that's the thing, like, it's about if a, a story can keep you hooked. Right. But people don't necessarily buy loads of tickets for the cinema to see Wes Anderson or someone like Woody Allen. Well, no one buys tickets to say Woody Allen anymore, but um Right. They don't they don't buy those tickets for the story necessarily. 
Now that seems like a weird statement. I'm just checking myself. Does that make sense? Well, they, they may they do, do it for but, the but, style. Yeah, and I, I think a lot know. of people, not everybody though, you know. No, I know. Maybe you I'm know, talking. I think people who know, like for example, right, I will go and see Wes Anderson film without even looking at the cast and characters and story because I know it's him. However, someone could be in that same cinema as me because they really want to see Isle of Dogs because they like dogs or they like, you know, whatever. And they discover Wes Anderson in that moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same with Tarantino. Same with other actors. Same, like, if if you see Denzel Washington in a film today, I'm going to go see that film. But then oh, someone, yeah. might just, someone might just want to go see a good action film and go, who is this guy who's the main actor? Ah, it's Denzel Washington. Oh, wow. Like they, Oh, wow. They, uh, like, they become like a fan, you know? I can't believe I'm sitting here with Denzel Washington. It's so rad. He's a really nice <laughs> It's quite good. It's quite <laughs> good. Um, as an actor, I want to be in a film set in Paris. There's something about it. something cool about it. Do you want to, as a human being, go there? And, yes, and, and 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 walk, and walk and chat to someone about Anything. nothing but everything. Do you, know, yeah. do you know what? It makes sense. Like, well, why does that make sense in Paris but not here? Because it's pish here. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because of like the the setting? Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna think. Uh, it's <laughs> it's what is it? Well, it's certainly warmer. But you know, it's, <laughs> certainly more pleasant <laughs> it's warmer in london too if you think about because london and paris are similar sort of you know capital cities and big metropolises but i don't yeah i don't i you know i live in london i do not walk the streets of london you um, do when i'm there i do when you're there but it's not a stroll is it it's kind of frantic yeah yeah let's go I, to this place let's go sit here for a bit let's take a break and sit down for a bit we did that a couple of times i don't know like obviously What's un, what, what, well, if you want to get the midnight in Paris experience, probably go to Paris now, if if it's illegal. I see what you mean. So because, because it's not as busy in midnight in Paris. In midnight in Paris, it's just like empty. <laughs> the streets are just empty, and he just looks like he's just walking these beautiful streets. There's no one else there. It's kind of perfect, but you know that in real life, because I, I had that thought. I was like, oh, I just want to go walk the streets of Paris. I was like, well, it would be really busy and you'd probably get run over by a moped it wouldn't be the right. same but having been there this last past august it gen it was like that pretty much certainly in the center where there was no tourists empty beautiful really nice <laughs> oh st- br- what are the yeah amazing brilliant um have you ever seen the film before sunrise no you've told me to watch it so many times even right Hawk. Ethan Hawke, Richard Linklater film. Um, it is about two strangers that meet on a train and they get off at the same stop and they just walk around Vienna. They just walk around talking. That's the whole film. Just a conversation between them, different locations in Vienna. And essentially, they, they don't explicitly say this, but you can tell by the mannerisms and stuff and the connection and the chemistry that they totally fall in love. And part of that's because of the setting of Vienna and the beautiful scenery and stuff, right? I wonder if there's a wee bit of um, inspiration from that film because that's like regarded as a really good actor's film a good director's film and just the way it's all thought out and stuff um i wonder like the scene with owen wilson with uh what is her name ariana and adriana adriana marion coltiard who i've heard of before actually yeah, um, plays adriana right and you know there's a moment where they leave a party and they just walk around paris together and chat and i wonder if they took inspiration from the before films there that's something I noted. I thought that was a nice touch. Also, I thought the music in the film helped the, the flow of it massively because of the time jump that we have. I mean, you mentioned what the film is about. Basically, Owen Wilson goes to the same location in Paris every night and at, every night and at midnight. For some reason, he is transformed back in time to the 1920s. And I thought it was a really fun, different, and interesting look at time travel. You know? Yeah, it's just—it's definitely not sci-fi. It's just like yeah. not explained and don't need a DeLorean, don't need a spaceship. Just it wow, just happens. there you go. Just wow, there you, you there, of, you're there. You kind of just accept that. I'll tell you what—it's a very. If you're actually listening to this and are thinking about watching it, do. It's a yeah. very very easy watch and Absolutely. kind of kind of pleasant. Um, kind of makes you feel kind of nice inside this one. I was I was feeling very tired that night, like very you know they be just yucky, right? 
it's a and, it's a, it's a film and it kept me awake and it kept me happy. It kept you awake, but it, I'd say it's a film that you could fall asleep to in a lovely way and not be mad at it. Absolutely, great point. Do you know what I mean? Um, you could fall asleep yeah. at a film like oh, fucking hell, but that's good. Um, yeah, it's a good film. That's a good one. I like watching these films because these are hidden gems that I didn't know about that I now like. You know, and as I said, we have to try and stick to more kind of bigger films that people have seen and stuff like that. But I also every so often, I'd quite like to watch, you know, another Rachel McAdams film, please. I see what you're saying. Yes. Did you but... see the Eurovision film back in May? No. No, it was a Netflix film with Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams. And the um are like a, like a double act that apply for Eurovision every year. And they never do very well. They never get through. And... um they do eventually and there's, there's friction between them and stuff and they know they're supposed to be together but they're just friends and that sort of thing and it's just a lovely film just what everybody was needing right at the start of lockdown last year and stuff the music is incredible so many good tunes original songs and it's called um what's it called eurovision the story of fire saga i think their team together are called fire saga and they create these these songs called yeah yeah ding dong and these things it's brilliant <laughs> And they brings they brought lots of attention to Iceland and the people of Iceland and that sort of thing because that's where they're from. Beautiful film. And at that moment, I was like, I really want to see Rachel McAdams in another film, maybe walking around Paris with Owen Wilson. And I got it. Exactly what you wanted. Yep. I'm just replying to a text. Hang on. You're replying to a text while doing a good bit podcast. It's for dinner. Hang on. It's for dinner. Would you watch the film again, though? If um. On a plane and feeling a bit tired, I'll stick it right on. I'll watch it again. I'll show it to someone. Yeah. Someone was like that. Okay, like, do you know anything about um, any films about, about Ernest Hemingway? No, but I know someone that plays him in a film. Certainly, if, if someone's looking for a film about Paris, I go, oh, I'll watch that. You'll be pleased. Yeah. If someone's it, looking it, for a Woody it, Allen film, right? We'll go watch uh, Annie Hall. And okay. Manhattan. Meryl Streep. It's Meryl Streep's like debut performance. Manhattan. Let, let's do um, next time it's your choice then. Pick Annie Hall. We'll do it. Maybe. Okay. Well, we've got Ian's choice next week. Right. Then I'll pick a film and then it's back to you. So you can choose. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Good Bit. Please follow us on our social media. Twitter is at The Good Bit Pod. And that's also the handle of our Instagram. Please follow us on there. Keep up to date with everything good bit, everything Chris and Aaron, and sometimes Ian, apparently. And uh, we will speak to you all next week. Any last words for the listeners? Stay safe. Oh, and not my mic. Stay safe. Uh, stay positive. Stay fresh. Um, stay fresh. Stay fresh. Why not? Uh, yeah, go for yeah, a walk. shower. Go for a build, walk. A, build, build a outhouse in someone's garden. Yeah, keep manual. Keep, uh, keep tactile. Uh, yeah, build. and do not... Pretend to be the world's strongest man on your bed. Yeah, no, don't do that. And don't go to Paris. You know what I mean? It's overrated. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for listening. We'll see you all next week.